We'll go ahead and get started. And thought we would talk about four topics. One is understanding what outcomes and patient experiences are. So the first is that we are typically following things like blood, eye pressure, visual acuity, but the patients, as, you, as we all know, are interested in what they can do with their vision as well as any symptoms that they have. In our field, people are now talking about patient experiences as well as outcomes that we measure. And what's the difference? Patient experiences are how they're doing with their condition, their treatment. So instead of measuring patient satisfaction, we'll ask, how are you doing? Patient satisfaction actually asks the patient, how are we doing as doctors? But we should be asking, how are you doing as the patient? And so this is what's going to be coming down the road in terms of how we measure outcomes in our field, not just in glaucoma, but across all of medicine. And so it's a subtle difference, but it's a very important difference. The second is understanding how patients with glaucoma experience this. And Dr. Romelu and the group at Hopkins have done a terrific job working on this. While we all know that when patients come in to see us and we tell them they have glaucoma, they're worried about going blind. At least in the United States, they often don't tell us that. But if we mention it to them, you can see the relief in their face that we recognize it and can help them deal with that. Individuals with glaucoma have a lot of problems. And this has been known for 20 years, for more than 20 years. These are the sorts of things that patients t will, if asked, tell people what they have, but really, how many times did they tell us they had these issues? And so it's important to think about asking patients about these things. And so the folks in uh, the UK have done a really nice job. David Crabb's done amazing work looking at understanding the patient experience with glaucoma. And you can see these are the things that they describe in terms of vision loss with glaucoma and visual field loss with glaucoma. And Pradeep's done some amazing work using GPS-enabled uh, accelerometers on people's smartphones to actually look at how many steps people take in a daily activities in terms of controls versus people with glaucoma. So physical activity goes down amongst people with glaucoma. Now, people who have functional vision loss, the more problems that we have, the more they tend to be depressed. So a lot of our patients are depressed, and it's an important aspect to keep in mind. And that as people get worse with their functioning, that's when they get depressed. It's not necessarily their IOP or their visual field, but they notice they have symptoms and problems. So why does this matter? It matters because we all understand the results of our various major randomized controlled trials for the therapy of glaucoma. We all see the same risk factors for why people get worse or develop glaucoma. But what's missing? We don't have any information in these trials, nor do we often measure issues related to resources, people's economic status, their transportation issues. I know uh, you deal with that very constructively here in India. You go out and get to the patients instead of relying on the patients to come to see us. And then Alan Robbins done amazing work over the last 20 years on how people actually use medications. And Alan, thanks to Venky, I'm actually going to show one of your videos. Okay. And so in the United States, the National Academy of Medicine has really pushed this idea of vision as a public health priority. That's something that you already do here really well in India. And so understanding that there are many other factors besides what we do when we see the patient is a really key force of what we're going to do next when we look at the provision of eye care and the prevention of vision loss. And so, uh, not surprisingly, the relationship of vision loss to poverty in the United States is very tight. And in the UK, people who come from a less advantaged socioeconomic background present much later with disease. So the glaucoma is more severe when it's picked up for people who come from neighborhoods with poorer outcomes. This is a diabetic retinopathy study from North Carolina from the folks at UNC, and it shows the power of geographic mapping showing what proportion of people 
are within 30 minutes of one of the major sites for care relative to the density of ophthalmologists. And when we just talk to individual patients, Cynthia Owsley and others have shown that it's transportation. Do people understand who I am in terms of culture and background? Age-appropriate communications, people come from different generations. Trust is a huge issue in the United States. I don't know how much trust issues exist here in India, but certainly in the United States with our history of racial and other problems, trust is a major factor. And then different expectations. Uh, Paula Ann Newman Casey's been working with many of you folks here, and she's done some nice work with Alan, again, looking at the range of factors that keep people from using medications, and that the people who do and don't use medications, they have the same factors. So it's not that some people with certain factors use medicines and others don't. They all have barriers. It's how people overcome the barriers and what we can do to help them. And then what are some of the specific issues. One is you've heard from Lee the importance of the Malmo study about getting out to the community and actually getting to patients before they show up in our office because the rate of visual field loss is much more severe by the time they show up. Again, Alan's done some wonderful work on communications. We know that people who have a good relationship with their doctors, who talk to their doctors about glaucoma, or we ask them tend to feel like they can do a better job, and if they do a better job, other studies show that they actually do better in terms of outcomes of pressure and visual field loss. And so two things to highlight here is ask the patient about their glaucoma or their treatment. Allen's study found less than 10% of the visits in the United States with glaucoma specialists did this occur, and ask them to demonstrate the drop technique. Now, how many of you have seen Professor Allen's videos about people using their eye drops? Okay, so some have, about a third. So this, Alan has so many great ones, I chose a short one. Um, I have to put my drop down. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, and just open like this. Oh, it go down, sorry. There you go. And close. Okay. Okay, so that's a short one. That's not too bad. You have people who dive bomb their eyes. It's basically, in the United States, there's an issue about people who run out of eye drops. It's our clinical impression that the people who run out of eye drops before refills probably have a problem putting the eye drops in. And that's why they run out of supply. Some basic tips about working with patients. Dr. Romelu's group, uh, he and Dave Friedman and Hal Quigley have really pointed out the importance of, as well as Alan, about asking patients with open-ended questions as opposed to closed-ended questions. And to just understand that patients may not understand what we're doing. One of the key things is in the United States, I'm sure here, different people have different preferences for how they would like to interact with us and with their families. And so we all think if we give them a lot of education, that's a good thing. When I moved to North Carolina from Los Angeles, the more I talked to certain patients, the more they looked at me like I didn't know what was going on, until one of them was finally kind enough to me and says, Dr. Lee, please stop. The more you talk, the more I think you don't know what you're doing. Because there's someone who wanted to be told, this is what you have, this is what you need to do, and they didn't want all that other stuff. And so there are patients who are like that. And so knowing the kind of patient and what they want is an important aspect of gaining their trust and their confidence. And so since then, I've hopefully done a better job. This communications piece is really important because the National Academies of Medicine describes the failure to appropriately communicate as a diagnostic error. And so this is front and center in what we're trying to do. So we should ask about activities that are important to patients. When we look at charts, we don't see any documentation that this ever happens. Family members are also depressed. So just because a family member is there with them, you think they're helpful, not always the case. And if we've actually talked to the family members of the support groups, these are some of the factors that people talk about. And one key takeaway from this work is that the family members and the patients 
actually have to match up in terms of how much involvement they want. If one wants a lot and the other doesn't want any, that relationship doesn't work and people will act out. And so better adherence behavior occurs when that matches as well. And then Paul Ann's working with uh, Manju and our folks here at, about how to use SWATI on how to personalize the treatment. So just like Lee talked about personalizing the genetics, personalizing the education, the approach is an important aspect. And just to finish up, a couple things for tips for medications. Have a little schedule that patients can see, otherwise it's very hard. Dr. Robin's videos, I'm sure you'll make available to people, so you can look on how to do this. And just three things is when we talk to people about if you don't do this, you're going to go blind, the last one, a lot of patients will say, oh, well, if you think I'm going to go blind, there's no reason I have to waste my time and money coming back to see you. So we've heard that on videotape from patients. And if many people live in a community or have friends that have lost a lot of vision from glaucoma, they need extra convincing because they're thinking, well, I lose eyesight from glaucoma. That's what typically happens, so there's not much I can do. And then the last one is, if I don't go to the doctor, then I don't know I'm going blind. So, Lee, that may have been a factor behind your patient. They just had a lot going on in their lives. They figured, as long as I don't go to the doctor, I'm not going to get any bad news. And really, you've heard a lot at this conference about what's going on, about the electronics, all different ways, OCT, that we're going to do a better job of looking after patients. All that's going to do is to make the importance of human relationships much more important because at the end of the day, that's why we came into this line of work. It's really to help each individual patient. So thank you very much. And I don't see Venki here. So anyways, thank you very much. <laughs>